Hello. Welcome back to the Space Gulag, otherwise known as PPS Diver, your favorite hangout place. They wreck with another Star Wars story. Today we're doing What If Sidious Had Abandoned His Apprentice on Mustafar after his disappointing loss to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Before we begin this video, special thanks to our patrons, voice actors, and everyone else part of the Pandy Patrol team. If you want a chance to win in our next giveaway, watch to the end of the video and I'll tell you exactly how you can win. Our story begins moments after Anakin loses his battle to Obi-Wan Kenobi. The air on Mustafar was thick. Obi-Wan looked down at Anakin and his fallen apprentice rolled to the bottom of the hill near the lava banks. Obi-Wan couldn't believe it. His heart was broken into a million pieces. Anakin's eyes were painted in a golden layer of color, replacing what used to be a beautiful blue. Obi-Wan thought of the words to say and they all rang out, as he could hear Anakin rolling around in pain. It was heartbreaking to just see how Anakin could have fallen so, so low. It was of course Obi-Wan's job to kill Anakin, but he couldn't kill him. Skywalker was defenseless, on the cusp of falling into the lava river. Obi-Wan of course could walk down the hill and kill him, but it was too dangerous. The booming of volcanoes filled the air as Obi-Wan told Anakin that he was the Chosen One, that it was said he would destroy the Sith, not join them, bring balance to the Force, and not leave it in darkness. Anakin groaned and looked up the hill as he yelled a ferocious I hate you. Obi-Wan looked down with a heart full of regret. It was his student. He failed Anakin, and this is what became of him. There were thousands of thoughts in Kenobi's mind as he looked down at Skywalker, the boy he so proudly raised, now just a shadow on the sulfur ash and suit that laid on Mustafar's floor. Obi-Wan wanted to say more, even a small part of him wanted to save Anakin, but he couldn't. The time was over. Anakin was no longer his student, nor was he a Jedi. He betrayed everyone he loved, it was time to let him go. And while Obi-Wan didn't want to let him go, he needed to. Obi-Wan took one final look at Anakin. His body didn't catch fire, but Obi-Wan had to let go. He could feel darkness approaching. It must have been Sidious. Obi-Wan was worried if Yoda had survived or not. That information would come to him another time. For now, he needed to get Padme off the world. Anakin lay on the banks of the Mustafar River as he felt the heat rising up over his body. It wasn't fire, and Anakin couldn't imagine what that pain would have felt like. But he was coated in sweat. His body was numb, and the only limb he had left was a metallic arm, the same one that he lost during his first duel with Dooku. Anakin looked up the lava banks as he tried to climb up. He could feel that Kenobi had left. It hurt Anakin in the heart. While in the moment, he did truly hate Obi-Wan, he couldn't help but feel more alone than ever, being that Obi-Wan abandoned him. Anakin also couldn't believe he lost to Kenobi. Anakin was the most powerful being in the galaxy, and he was bested by Obi-Wan. Sure, it was his former student, but Anakin couldn't have imagined losing to him after not losing the sparring match in years to him. Yet, the entire time, Obi-Wan was humbled by it, and Anakin never saw it. Now as Vader, he was weaker than he'd ever been before in his life. Anakin crawled back up the lava bed as he felt the rocks and sulfur crawl down into his robes. The stiff ground crawled against his fresh wounds as the heat they admitted burnt the freshly sealed skin. Anakin groaned as he made his way up the lava bank slowly. He couldn't believe any of this was real, as he looked to the side. Though, through his hair, he saw a cloaked man. It was Sidious. He was here to save Anakin from his greatest failure. Sidious walked over the ledge and looked down at Anakin. Sidious asked Skywalker what happened here. Anakin looked at Sidious with the piercing yellow eyes as he rolled over to face his new master. Anakin told him that he was bested by Kenobi and he was left here to die. Sidious nodded his head, and let a simple, mm-hmm. The Dark Lord looked down at Vader, the prized apprentice he wished to have. He was now useless now. He would never be anything that he wanted him to be. Sidious told Anakin that he would have been better off dying as a Jedi, because he wouldn't have been such a disappointment. Maybe if Anakin died as a Jedi, he would have been more of a hero or a martyr, not simply a failure. The truest form of disappointment. Anakin looked up towards Sidious as he reached for his robes, asking for his master's aid. Sidious looked down at Anakin as he told the fallen Jedi that he was no longer his apprentice. Anakin looked up at Sidious in shock. The Dark Lord lowered his hands at Skywalker as he told him that he was not worthy of being his apprentice. Lightning shot out of Sidious' fingertips as Anakin screeched out in agony. Sidious used the force, electricity, to shock Anakin with so much ferocity and power. Anakin cried out as Sidious stopped. He looked down at Anakin as he nodded his head and told Anakin that he would die here alone as a true failure should. 
Anakin looked up at Sidious as smoke flooded from his chest. Anakin couldn't believe it as he watched Sidious and the two Coruscant guardsmen walk away from him, leaving him alone to die. Anakin watched the men disappear over the horizon, and moments later, the ship they arrived in vanished into the smoke surrounding Mustafar. Anakin laid there in agony. His eyes left their yellow state. Confusion rang throughout his body. He didn't know what to do anymore. He was abandoned by the one man who was supposed to help him. Anakin looked into the sky. Time stood still for him. Moments felt like hours. Sure, the pain he felt physically was brutal, but nothing was more punishing than the emotional and mental turmoil that he was now facing in the moment. Anakin looked at the clouds of smoke above him as tears began fleeing from his eyes. He was a failure. Not to Sidious, not to the Jedi, nor to Obi-Wan. Anakin was a failure to himself. He abandoned everything he knew and loved for this. Desolation in the most hell-filled role in the galaxy. Anakin couldn't help but feel and think of all the innocent lives he murdered inside the Jedi Temple. He threw away anything and everything for nothing. Anakin thought about Padme. He hoped that she would be alright, hoping that she was safe. He knew he acted out of line by choking her. Even if she was into it, it wasn't the proper time to find out. Anakin thought about how she lay there so still, as if she was dead, and all he could do was focus on the one man who loved him more than anyone else in the galaxy. Anakin knew he messed up, but it was too late to right all the wrongs of the past. Anakin's heart lay in ruins as he felt the ash land on his face and dry his tears. Anakin hadn't ever felt so weak, not when his mother died, nor when he fell to his knees before Sidious after kicking Mace out of the window. Anakin closed his eyes as he listened blankly, his thoughts once full of consistent thinking, now empty. Anakin silenced his mind as he truly took in what had become of him. Anakin traveled inside of his mind as he remembered the encounter he had on Mortis. He talked to the ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn. The ghost of Master Qui-Gon asked Anakin and what he thought if he was the Chosen One. Anakin said he didn't know how. He didn't know, asking if he could know. And Qui-Gon told him that he believed he could conquer his demons and become the Chosen One he was destined to become. Anakin thought about how warm that made him feel in his heart. He dwelt on that moment. He thought about what it meant for Qui-Gon to say to him. He thought about what it meant for Qui-Gon to say that to him. He wished he could have another moment with Qui-Gon. Anakin closed his eyes and quietly waited to die, or maybe he just needed time to process everything. He wasn't really sure yet. It's not that he didn't want to see Padme, or to strike down Sidious, but he felt more helpless than ever. He felt like there was nothing he could do to get back into the galaxy and take the fight back to the Sith. Anakin most certainly wasn't the Jedi anymore, and he didn't want to be, but he was going to kill the man that made him lose everything. While Anakin was a bit uncertain of his thoughts, and even lack of clarity, he was starting to grasp everything that happened and why Padme was so quick to turn on him. Because for Anakin, he did everything he could for Padme. She was the only one he really cared about, and it was his lust for more power that took her from him. Sidious abandoning Anakin made him realize, more than anything, that for Anakin, it was the fact that the Sith that he placed all of his faith into turned around and left him to die, after electrocuting him nearly to death. Anakin was still in pain from him, and beside the rock burn across his wounds and the sulfur breathing down his chest, Anakin didn't see the scarring left behind from the electrocution. His chest was full of lightning barks, and it was very ugly, but Anakin couldn't see it at the moment. It was at the moment that Anakin needed to decide if he would die alone on Mustafar, or if he would better himself, strengthen himself to become more than just a Jedi or a Sith. Anakin was going to decide if he was going to be good enough to be the Jonas One or not. Anakin turned over and began to crawl back to where his ship was. The journey was strenuous, full of pain and suffering. Anakin's body would be filled with scratches and burn marks from crawling across the surface of the hot rocks. As much as it hurt, Anakin decided in this moment that he would better himself so that he could justly bring balance to the Force. Anakin wasn't going to be a Jedi anymore. He didn't deserve that. Instead, he was going to become what he was always meant to be. Anakin crawled. Thankfully, his arm was metallic because if it had been flesh, he didn't think he would have been able to make it. The amount of pain his closed off wounds were in was uncanny. But he made his way to the top of the hill and over towards the forced platform. The heat was repugnant. While Jedi robes were certainly thick, the heat blasting off from the surface of the metallic structure hurt unlike anything else. Anakin had to make his way into the complex. There the floors should be much cooler. 
Anakin continued along as he crawled across the scorching surface, feeling the lightning scars match with the burning sensation of metallic heat. The rocks and pebbles inside of his robes didn't help much either, as they rubbed against his skin and the thick robes he wore. This created a burning effect that would too leave rash marks all across the inside of Anakin's body. After an hour of treacherous travel, Anakin finally made it inside of the complex. He looked across the floor and saw littered bodies throughout it. Regret filled Anakin's head as he looked at the computer console system and it showed its reflection. Anakin looked at himself. He couldn't believe what he'd become. This was all his doing, because he couldn't blame Obi-Wan for everything. Anakin was an adult now and his choices were made by him, no one else. He could pass the blame off anywhere he wanted, but that would only be an excuse for his failures. If Anakin wanted to truly succeed from this, he needed to accept this not just as his greatest trial, but as his greatest failure. Anakin rolled back over as he let his chest cool off. Anakin would have liked to remove the pebbles and rocks from his clothes, but there was no saying he'd be able to get that clothing back on his body before he went to his ship. Anakin let the cool floor cover his body and cool him off. Anakin closed his eyes and felt meditative again. There was a fine line between pain and serenity, and Anakin was discovering it. Anakin, after a short break, would roll back over and make his way for the ship that he arrived in. Anakin didn't know at this point where he was going to go, but he did know he was going to get himself some new limbs. The only real thing keeping Anakin functioning was the fact that he was determined to right the wrongs of his past by positively changing the future. Anakin, in this moment of serenity, realized he couldn't change what had been done in the past, but if he changed the present, then it could positively impact the future. So that's what Anakin was going to do. He began crawling across the floors, seeing lightsaber wounds and bodies, battle droids, and throughout the corridors that he and Obi-Wan tore apart when they came blasting through. Crawling inside of the complex was much nicer than crawling outside of it. The rocks and stones inside of his clothing still hurt. It actually hurt more because of him stopping and resting. If he had just continued and stopped once he got to the ship, it would have been a different story. Regardless, Anakin continued out of the complex and back onto the hot surface of the landing platform. Anakin then looked out as he saw his ship. It was so close. He was so close to being done with this first challenge of becoming Anakin Skywalker again. Anakin pushed himself harder and harder to reach the shuttle as he groaned in more agony. It was a difficult journey and it didn't get any easier as he got to the ship and realized he'd have to climb up onto it. It was elevated. Anakin was a very strong man, but doing this with one arm would be exceedingly difficult. Anakin didn't think about this as he reached his arm up and pulled his face into the bottom of his ship, smacking his nose into the metal. Anakin crunched his face as he wilted in the pain. Anakin felt liquid running across his face as he yelled at in frustration. Anakin brought his metallic hand back as he wiped blood away from his cheek. Anakin thought about how ridiculous this was. He needed to be more patient. Anakin used the ship to sit himself up, as he used his core strength to keep himself sat straight forward. Anakin then reached up to where R2's port was as he felt around for a small hole inside of the ship. Anakin got a hold of it as he took a deep breath and pulled himself up on top of the ship. Anakin took a deep breath as he opened up the cockpit window and slid himself down into the seat. Anakin sighed as he turned on the ship, having to take it slower than he normally did. Anakin was used to having used both hands to get the ship started, but now he was doing everything with his right hand. Anakin was able to get everything going as he looked down at the controls and rolled his eyes into the back of his head, as he placed his head on the headrest behind him. Anakin couldn't believe this day would get any worse. The ship required two hands to steer. At this point, in Anakin's mind, it was comedic that he was continuously finding himself in a situation that was rather unfavorable. Instead of whining, Anakin took a hold of the throttle and slowly lifted himself into the air. As he pushed the landing gear in, he quickly moved his head back to the control as he lifted the ship slowly into the air. Anakin had to be very careful. He didn't want to stall his vehicle out. If he didn't properly use the throttle with the altitude, he could very easily find himself falling into a lava pit without maneuverability to save himself. Anakin glided across the sky as he slowly got himself higher and higher into the air until he realized he was heading directly towards a volcano. Anakin bit his lips so he didn't say something that would piss him off even more as he pulled the starship back up as he began pointing it towards the sky. Anakin realized he messed up. The ship was going to stall out above a volcano. This couldn't be how Anakin Skywalker died. As the ship slowly started to drift back, Anakin shoved the throttle in as hard as he could, sending the ship blasting into space. 
after the gears and the engine grinded against each other, creating a very uncomfortable sound for Anakin, who twitched his face to it. He knew that it would be part of another repair for him to worry about, as a small yellow starfighter pierced the sky. He pulled up a hollow map that showed the nearby systems. Anakin couldn't believe it. The closest system where he could get cheap and affordable makeshift limbs was his home world of Tatooine. Talking about putting sand in the wound, at least that's how Anakin thought the expression went. Anakin set the coordinates for Tatooine as the ship blasted in the hyperspace. Anakin sat in the cockpit quietly. All of his comms were shut down, and without R2, there was no way he'd be able to get them back on. Anakin thought about contacting Padme's shuttle, but without his communication array online, Anakin would have to wait until he got to his new limbs before he could mess around with the starfighter and reconfigure the starship's communications array. He was ordered by his master to sever all communication with anyone but him. Anakin was now seeing why Sidious was making such a weird request. Within hours, Anakin was able to slowly but surely land his starfighter inside of a hangar bay in Mos Espa. It was Anakin's hometown. He knew exactly what district he needed to land in. Once Anakin landed, he popped the cockpit and asked for the hangar owner to grab a medical team to get him to a specialist. The owner looked at Anakin in an almost comedic way as she ran and called a group of people to come and grab Anakin. Within several minutes, Anakin was lifted out of his shuttle and taken to a specialist that would assist him with all of his issues. The specialist asked Anakin if he'd like any specific limbs, and Anakin told them that he just wanted regular limbs, nothing too special. Specifically, a regular hand like the one he currently had. The benefit of being on Tatooine at the moment is that most of the people on Tatooine didn't know about the Jedi Purge. Anakin was being treated like a Jedi, and that was with respect. It's why people were so quick to grab Anakin from the Starfighter and get him to the Specialist. Though Anakin was extremely grateful for the care that was given to him, Anakin would be put under, and within the span of a couple hours, he would wake up in a dimly lit room. Anakin's first reaction would be look at his limbs. Anakin saw that he had his arms and legs. Anakin pulled his left arm over his head and looked at it. It was the same build as a right hand, which was a legendary move by the Specialist. Anakin was rather grateful that the specialist matched up the arms. Anakin sat as he looked at his legs. They were rather stiff, but they bent to the knees, and that was really all they needed to do. Anakin swung his legs over the table as he stood up. He was a bit wobbly, but he began and was able to walk. It felt good, but he needed some clothing first. Anakin looked down at his chest, and his torso was covered in medical patches. The specialist took great care of him. The specialist heard Anakin walking around as she ran into the room and asked Anakin to sit back down. Anakin looked at her with his eyes wide open. He was very confused. He wasn't entirely sure where he was, as the amnesia hadn't worn off. The specialist gently placed her hands on his chest and pushed him back to the table. She told him to take it easy. He needed more time to heal. If he started walking on the legs too soon, he could damage the flesh that they were attached to. Anakin sat back down, looked at her, and he placed his metallic hand on one of her hands. Anakin asked if she was Padme. The specialist shook her head. She simply said she was Dosanth Lakale. Anakin nodded his head as he let her push him back onto the table. She asked if he was a Jedi. Anakin shook his head as he looked at the ceiling, saying that he used to be. Dosanth asked Anakin what happened. Anakin's eyes rolled back as he closed his eyes and spoke without really having a clear direction. He told her he was a Jedi Sith that was corrected by a Sith and failed, and, and Anakin fell back asleep. As Dosanth took the patches off the skin and looked at the rashes left behind from Mustafar, the lightning marks were also healing a little bit. Dosanth got some fresh medical patches and placed them back on the wounds, as she got a small blanket and placed it on Anakin's chest to keep him warm. After about a day or two, Anakin would wake up and readjust his eyes. Everything felt like a fever dream. He wasn't sure what was real or what wasn't. Having amnesia after traumatic events didn't necessarily help him with remembering those traumatic events. Though as Anakin went to rub his face, he looked at both metallic hands. And then everything made more sense to him. Anakin had nightmares about the few previous days, but he wasn't entirely sure if it was real or not. The fact that it was broke his heart. As Anakin swung his legs back over the side of the table, he looked over and saw DeSanth sleeping. Anakin tried to be quiet, but his metal legs smacked the side of the table and let out a massive ring across the room. Dosanth jolted from her feet as she prepped for a fight. Anakin took note of how quickly she was to go from dormant to throwing hands. She looked at Anakin and asked if he was okay. Anakin nodded. He was much more coherent than he was the day before. 
He stepped down as he put pressure on his legs. Dosanth jumped up to make sure that Anakin didn't fall. Anakin steadied himself on his legs as he held out his arms to balance himself. He hadn't ever felt this way before. His legs were completely out of his control, but he stepped forward and lost his balance immediately. Dosanth was there to catch him as he fell. Anakin tried to be gentle, but when he was hauling an extra 50 pounds of metal, it was hard to be gentle. Though Dosanth was a tough Tatooine girl, she caught Anakin and set him straight. She told him that maybe he should spend some time with his legs before trying to run a decathlon. Anakin smiled as he moved over to a chair and sat himself down. He looked over his legs and moved them individually, trying to get used to their maneuverability. Dosanth told him that it would be easier if it was just one leg, but since he lost both, it would be more challenging. Anakin nodded his head quietly as he looked over at his new legs. Dosanth spoke up, asking what happened to him. Anakin looked over and then back down to his legs. He thought about what to say, but then he decided he might as well. What could he lose? Anakin expressed he made a mistake because he was trying to change fate and ended up causing it. Now he needed to fix what had been done and make the galaxy better. Dosanth was confused, but Anakin told her that it wasn't something she had to worry about. She would let him have some time to his new legs alone, and for several hours, Anakin would think about his next steps. Anakin needed a new lightsaber before he faced Palpatine again. He couldn't be unprepared for this final duel. Anakin, after hours, would walk into the streets and look into the night sky. The city was still busy, Mos Espa never slept. Dawes came out and asked Anakin what he was doing. He looked at her and grabbed a handful of credits and thanked her for all of her kind work. She looked at him and asked him where he was going. Anakin said he needed to learn the truth. Dawes asked what he meant by that, but Anakin had already disappeared into the crowd. He was walking a little funky, but it wouldn't stop him from heading back to Naboo. He had to find out if Padme was still alive. As Anakin made his way into the hangar, he tossed some credits at the hangar owner and jumped into his starfighter. Anakin launched. It felt nice to have full control over his body again. He was getting more and more comfortable with the new arm and legs, but there were some tweaks that he needed to fish out. As Anakin's starship jumped into hyperspace, Anakin played around with his new limbs while he traveled through hyperspace. Once Anakin got to Thede, he saw an array of candles lining the streets. Anakin looked down, he couldn't make out the faces. He made his way around the corner and flew into the hangar. There he was stopped by a guardsman. Anakin asked what was going on, as the guardman told him that he was forbidden to leave the hangar. Anakin again asked why and the guardman told him that Naboo was memorializing one of the youngest queens, who recently passed away. Anakin asked what her name was, as the man told her it was Amidala. Anakin's heart fell into a million pieces. The guard told him that he could visit the procession once it was done. Anakin nodded his head as he walked back to his ship and sat inside of it quietly, while he cried alone for several hours. Anakin couldn't believe it. She really had died, and while Anakin didn't know what she died of, he couldn't help but blame himself for letting it happen. He thought he most likely caused it through his erratic behavior. After several hours, Anakin was able to make his way to the tomb to see his wife's coffin. Anakin had no reason to believe that she had their child. While Anakin nor Padme knew she would have twins, Anakin didn't know she lived long enough to birth twins. Anakin stood by her tomb, alone, as he thought about everything that had transpired since the fall of the Republic. Too much to bear. Anakin eventually would leave the tomb and go back to his ship. Anakin knew he needed to construct himself a lightsaber. He also needed to come to learn how to be comfortable with his body and the new enhancements it had. Anakin would leave Naboo to go across the galaxy for a planet in the far reaches of the galaxy at Ilum. Anakin would return to find himself a new lightsaber crystal. Anakin would be there to construct himself a new lightsaber too. Anakin's journey to Ilum would have him staying for a full year. On Ilum, Anakin would be able to find himself again. The seclusion mixed with the cold air and the force surrounding the area gave Anakin the perfect environment to rebuild himself from the ground up. Anakin would be able to get back into the fit of form after training on Ilum. The cold didn't mesh well with the metallic joints, but Anakin stayed because it meant that he had to be extra focused on himself and his development. Though so much trial and tribulation, Anakin would just not go silently away. With a new lightsaber and a new attitude towards life and the galaxy, Anakin was able to do something special. Anakin was able to construct himself a new lightsaber with a blade of the color of ice. Anakin's purified heart saw his essence shown through purification of a blade. Master Sunube got close to having a purified blade, but he was never able to obtain the particular shade of purification. 
Anakin was so proud of himself, but it was all because of him. No one else could do it for him. He had to be the sole architect of rebuilding his future for himself. While Anakin was able to come to terms with the death of his wife and child, he wasn't able to just let the galaxy wither away under the leadership of the new Emperor. Anakin felt ready to face Sidious and take him down for the betterment of the galaxy. And as Anakin made his way out into the galaxy, he would encounter a familiar face. Though all this was through an unforeseeable turn of events, Anakin would return to Naboo before going to face the Emperor. Something pulled him back. Anakin thought it was motivation of sorts to see what happened because of the man he was going to face against. Anakin showed up on Naboo to feel a familiar presence in the Force. While the face hadn't revealed itself yet, Anakin walked quietly through Theed. It was nighttime there, and there was no reason for him to be rowdy. Anakin donned new robes of his own. They were lighter, even a little gray. Anakin was more at peace with himself, even after the atrocities of a year before. Anakin walked down into the tomb and knelt beside Padme's tomb. He told her he would make what was wrong right. He would sow the light, and he would extinguish the darkness. Then from behind him, a voice said that he brought nothing but darkness. Anakin recognized the voice as he jumped to his feet and turned around. The voice was just a shadow, as he asked Anakin about his new legs. Anakin nodded his head as he said that it was a turning point for him. The voice told Anakin that the turning point would be his death. And, here and now, an amethyst blade ignited and lit up the face of Mace Windu. Anakin told Windu that they did not need to be adversaries. Windu squinted his eyes, saying that they were on the same side, why would he ever trust him again? Anakin said it was a fair point, but he tried to reason with Windu. It was clear that Windu couldn't be reasoned with. He was representing all the worst qualities of the Jedi Order that had recently fallen. Folly, impatience, fear, anger, vengeance. Mace wasn't being a Jedi, not like the one he was supposed to be. Anakin told Mace he didn't want to fight, but he would defend himself if he had to. Windu shook his head, as he told Anakin that he couldn't be forgiven. This hurt Skywalker to the core. He'd spent the last year doing everything he could just so he could make things right. He still intended on making things right, but regardless, it hurt him to hear it. Anakin ignited a blindingly white lightsaber as Mace moved into attack position. Anakin didn't move as Windu swung at him violently. Anakin raised his blade as he blocked the assault. Anakin then used the force to shove Mace back out of the tomb. Windu was very powerful, but Anakin had achieved his own sense of balance, and he was going to use that balance to fight Windu and Sidious. Windu stood back up as Anakin walked slowly out of the tomb. He raised his weapon as he told Windu that he didn't want this to happen. Windu growled as he jolted forward and swung his blade towards Skywalker. Anakin ducked under the strike as he rolled across the floor and kicked Mace in the shins with his metal legs. Windu tumbled down again as Anakin stood back up and looked over at Windu. Anakin steadied himself. He knew Mace would thrive off a dark side opponent, but Anakin no longer harbored dark side attributes. Anakin stepped back again as he parried a strike by Mace. Anakin was a masterful duelist in defense. He wasn't being aggressive. Though Anakin didn't want to be aggressive, he was giving Mace as much time to reconsider this fight as he could. He didn't want to kill Mace, but Mace was begging it. Windu struck again, getting angrier and angrier with each strike as Anakin slowly pulled each strike in with a defensive parry. Anakin got Mace out over a bridge. The duel could be seen in the reflection of the water below it. Anakin saw it from the corner of his eyes as ice and amethyst met on the, on the bridge. Anakin tried to give Mace more time, but it wasn't worth it. Mace's strikes got heavier and heavier, and his anger soared over his head. He was acting like a Sith. It would be the perfect preparation for dueling Sidious, but Skywalker stepped back as Windu threw insults at Skywalker. Nothing could make him angry, though. Anakin was in peace. Windu swung violently and openly, leaving himself exposed. Anakin punched Windu's hand to the side as he twisted around and spun himself next to Windu, and as his blade pierced the heart of the Jedi. Skywalker turned around and grabbed Windu, not allowing him to fall. Anakin slowly lowered him to the ground, apologizing. Mace grabbed for his lightsaber once more, as Anakin pushed it away gently. Anakin told Mace that if the Order were to survive, it had to be done through peace, not vengeance. Anakin told Mace that all the wrongs will be made right, though sadly it would have to be done without him. Windu looked at Anakin, and then realized how wrong he was. Windu didn't realize he was so out of his own place. He became the very thing he swore to destroy, and he became the same thing the Jedi were not supposed to be. He represented the failure of an order, the failure of the Jedi, to see their own inaction and their own inability to keep the light. 
Anakin used Harmony to let Mace go to sleep, one last time in peace. As Mace slowly closed his eyes and died in Anakin's hands, Anakin frowned as he picked up Windu's body and walked with the body towards the same location they memorialized Qui-Gon Jinn so many years beforehand. Anakin lay Mace's body down as he ignited a flame and allowed the former master of the Order to be buried in the way of the Jedi. Anakin turned around and walked out of the chamber as he made his way back for his ship. It was time that he dealt with Sidious once and for all. Anakin would hop into his starfighter as he took it across the galaxy to find on a special mission. Not of vengeance, but injustice. Anakin was going to bring the galaxy back into harmony, reinstate a democracy, and destroy the rule of its evil emperor. Anakin had just a hope that the Senate was strong enough to return the galaxy back to the Republic. It had only been a year, so most of the Senators were still the same, and many of them had lost favorability with the Emperor because he completely disregarded their opinions, other than those with more extremist viewpoints on the Republic, or the Empire as it was now. Hours would pass for Anakin as he meditated inside of his cockpit. It was sort of a battle meditation for Skywalker. He was just focused on the Force, and he allowed it to guide him in his actions. Anakin's mind was focused. He landed on the Senate building and stepped out. He closed his eyes and walked forward as he raised his robe over his head. Some weird looking troopers approached him and spoke up. They told him that he was under arrest. Anakin looked at him through his hood, though they were not clones, but they thought he was a Jedi. Anakin didn't have time for this, and he raised them into the air and threw them across the landing platform. Anakin walked forward. Sidious was here, he could feel the presence. Though Anakin was hiding his own, he wanted to catch the Emperor off guard, and he did. When he walked into the Emperor's office, he saw some of Padme's former friends. Bail Organa and Mon Mothma were two of them. Anakin looked up to them and told them that they should leave, as they all got up from their seats and walked past Anakin. They all heard a lightsaber ignite behind them. Sidious looked at Anakin with shock, asking how he survived. Anakin smiled as he told him it was that simple. He figured out how to cheat death. It was a rebuttal to anything Palpatine ever told Skywalker. Anakin wasn't having it though. He was going to end Sidious here and now. The Dark Lord rose from his feet as he ignited his lightsaber and stepped around his desk. Anakin was patient. He squinted his eyes as he looked at Palpatine and guided his blade around into his fighting stance. Anakin's robes were glorious as they helped Anakin stay in the present in the moment. Sidious was going to kill Anakin. If Kenobi could almost do it, then surely Sidious would have no issue. The Dark Lord lunged across the room as Anakin blocked the strike. Royal guards flooded the room as they surrounded Anakin. Skywalker was quick as he parried and struck where he could. There were so many guards, but it was no use to them. Anakin swung his blade back and forth as he moved like a blur. Sidious watched Skywalker dance around as his guards, and they were all knocked off their feet and killed by this pure blade. Sidious then fixated on the blade. He didn't realize Anakin were fully pure from evil. How could he have achieved such purity in that much of a year? He lost everything, and yet somehow he found the resolve within himself to be balanced within the Force. Anakin struck down the last few guards as Sidious lunged forward again, trying to best Anakin when he wasn't ready. It proved to no avail as Anakin parried and stepped back. Anakin and Sidious got into a ferocious duel. Their blades moved at the speed of light, as the two of them resulted to trying to kill each other with their blades. Sidious pushed Anakin off and leaped off the furniture in the room. Anakin had enough playing around. As Sidious was in midair, he used the force to throw Sidious across the room and out the window. Anakin followed as he stepped over the numerous bodies strewn across the floor. Anakin ran and leapt as he fell, following Sidious to the ground. The Dark Lord shot lightning up at Anakin as he fell. Anakin used the force to take in the lightning and shoot it back at Sidious, who was completely caught off guard by this. The lightning blast hit him so hard it shot him to the side of the building. Anakin watched as Sidious rolled off the building and slid down to the base of the structure. Anakin landed perfectly as he turned and looked at Sidious, who was reeling in pain. Sidious got up as he looked at Skywalker. Anakin told Sidious that he had been thankful that he left him on Mustafar. He would have never found the peace without him. But now, he was going to help restore order to the galaxy, and that order would be brought by killing him. Sidious looked for his lightsaber. It was nowhere to be found, as Anakin stepped forward and reached out his hand and held Sidious in place with the Force. The Dark Lord squirmed, as Anakin got closer with his blade drawn. Anakin said that he wouldn't revive the Sith. The Plague of the Force would be gone forever, right? Now, Anakin's blade cut through the helpless Sidious as Anakin watched the body go limp. Anakin then used the force to crumble the body and reduce it to ash. 
Anakin didn't want the body to be revivable. As the body turned to dust, a small wind came and blew the remnants of Sidious into the air and out of visibility. Anakin looked up when he heard a commotion. It was a handful of troopers and they were staring down at him. They started shooting at him, and Anakin looked up and then darted into the air, disappearing. Days later, the ghost who killed Sidious was seen in the streets of Mos Espa. Anakin returned to the specialist, the Santh. It may have been a year since she helped him, but Anakin never forgot. She was very surprised to see him. Anakin didn't know where this was going, but he came back to see her. As he did, he also saw someone from the corner of his eye. Anakin told Dawes that he'd be back, as he chased after that someone in the crowd. Anakin ran forward, and when he got close, the hooded man turned around and looked at him. Obi-Wan's mouth hung open as he looked into Anakin's eyes. Obi-Wan stood back. There was a certain level of fear in his eyes. Anakin had a weapon. Obi-Wan didn't. Obi-Wan didn't say a word as Anakin said Obi-Wan's name. Obi-Wan didn't utter a word as Anakin spoke to his former master. He told Obi-Wan that he was sorry for everything that had happened. Obi-Wan tried to hold back tears, but it was no use. Obi-Wan didn't have words to say. He spent the last year having nightmares about Mustafar, believing that Anakin was dead, and yet he was right in front of him. Standing in front of him, Obi-Wan held his breath. Anakin stepped forward and held out his hand towards Obi-Wan. Kenobi was still skittish as he looked at Skywalker. Anakin apologized for everything he put him through. It wasn't who he was, and since Mustafar, he changed. Obi-Wan stared at Anakin without moving. Hesitation crawled down his back. Anakin told Obi-Wan that he made things right again. He told Obi-Wan that Sidious was gone and there would be peace. Obi-Wan reached out his hand as he and Anakin interlocked hands and pulled each other in for a tight hug. Both of them couldn't hold back their tears. There was too much emotion for them not to cry their hearts out. They were brothers, or in Anakin's eyes, more of a father-son bond. Anakin never wanted to lose Obi-Wan, and he was so relieved to see that Padme was right. There was still good in him. Anakin took a deep breath as he and Kenobi held each other at arm's length. The two of them looked at each other for a short moment, as if they said a thousand words without speaking them. Kenobi and Anakin over the course of hours would catch up, in which Anakin would learn that his legacy continued through his children. When Anakin learned about Luke and Leia, he couldn't hold back his emotion. His heart was wrenching, but it was also so beautiful that he had two children. Anakin would first meet Luke, and shortly after he would meet Leia. Both adoptive parents were attached to their children, but they would allow Anakin to take his children back, though Anakin would slowly begin a love interest with Dawes. It would be a fiery one, and it would be endured by both her and him. The two of them would flourish together, and they would move off Tatooine to another world where they could raise his children. Anakin and Obi-Wan would become very tight again, and the year of damage done that was left behind would forever haunt Obi-Wan, but in his heart he would also learn how to forgive Anakin. With Palpatine gone, the Empire would struggle, and it would continue to struggle. There was loyalists that dug their feet into the cement, and there were those that opposed Sidious's empire, and they fought back. It wasn't on a battlefield, but inside of the Senate chambers. The Empire would stand, but demilitarization would become the talk of the galaxy. The Senate would also remove Order 66 and other strict laws on the galaxy. The Jedi would stay in hiding, but members would show up again throughout the galaxy, and unite together to build their order once again. Anakin would avoid the Jedi because of what he had done to them. As the Jedi didn't hold revenge, they also didn't try and have Anakin tried before the Empire, especially because he was essentially following the law when Order 66 happened. The Jedi would be able to find their place in the galaxy, and all their negative connotations that came with members like Windu died with him, and the Order lost during Order 66. The positive traits of peace and harmony and compassion would override and the Order would allow them to become more vocal in the galaxy once again and Skywalker, he would raise both his children with Dawes, and he would also train them in the ways of the Force with Uncle Kenobi. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our story. Again, special thanks to Benjamin Wells, Icy Raptor, and Gort for supporting the channel on Patreon. Let's hit 2,000 likes on this so we can see what comes next. I will be in Los Angeles for the week, so next video will probably be coming out next Friday. Sorry for the long delay, but I wanted to let you guys know that I will not be home. That is why. Uh, so stay tuned. I'll be doing videos on the weekend. That's a new updated schedule. I look at the analytics. Most of you guys are active now from Friday to Monday, so videos will be coming out on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday from now on. Friday and Monday at 5 p.m. EST and Saturday and Sunday at our normal noon EST or, you know, times across wherever it is that you guys live. Anyways, um, 
if you want to know, uh, if you want to see what else I've been doing, lowering around comments or whatever, you know that stuff already. Uh, for the giveaway, subscribe. I give away three lightsabers when we hit 50,000 subscribers. Let's talk about a story here. So this is an interesting story, um, in my opinion. I, I have to say, yesterday's story is certainly my favorite right now, but this one is um, is rather interesting. And I wanted to go with the morale or the moral story of of if you're going through it. You, you kind of have to do it yourself sometimes, and that's kind of what this story is about. It's, um, you know, it, it's it's a very personable tale, and it's a very, it's as all my stories try to be, it's always a tale about something that is something that you can take relatably, something that you can say is like, oh yeah, it's Star Wars, but it could be told on Earth. It's a story that can be told by by your friends, by your family, or whatnot, and it's a story about something that can be relatable, and that re relatable aspect of the story is. You can change your life with your own actions. And Anakin here is abandoned by Obi-Wan, which, you know, you guys saw that coming. But Sidious abandoning him, that's a different story. Now, I wanted to do two different stories in this, kind of take the what if Anakin was never burned, which I'll do one at some point, I'm sure, and what if um, Sidious abandoned Anakin. And I took the two of them and I put them together. Now, I will tell you, I had two original ideas for this. I'm not, there's no saying that I might not come back and redo them um, in the future, and that's something I'm thinking about doing is revisiting some older videos that I've done and revising them because there's different ideas I have for stories now. Uh, and this one had two different ideas. Originally, it was going to be Maul that came and saved Anakin. And then I was like, well, what if it was Ahsoka? And then I decided not to do either of them because I wanted to tell the story of personal success, the story of, of personal growth for Anakin. And I believe that having Ahsoka or Maul would have taken away from that. But you can kind of see the direction I was going with, and I'll leave it at that because I want to revisit that another time. But the fact that it, it's so everything can change with just one character being added or taken away, that I, I decided to let it be a story about Anakin. I know we have two stories back to back about Anakin, but this one I felt needed to be about Anakin because it was Anakin that had the change to become who he was meant to become. If he didn't change himself, if he didn't have that change within himself, then he would have just died on Mustafar, and that would have been the story. And it's a rather short story for 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 one of my stories. But um, again, I'm getting ready to go to Los Angeles, and and I had to get some stuff out for you guys. Uh, so I'm sure this one could have been longer, but I feel content with the length of this story and how it kind of how it progressed. I think Anakin could have found the way the way to become pure with himself. Uh, after losing the Mustafar and letting Sidious abandon him. But the key to all of it is Sidious abandoning him, right? All of his faith is in the Sith, and then the Sith just leaves on him. Now, Anakin could have gone two ways. He could have just gone mental and destroyed, tried to destroy the entire galaxy, or he could have seen it like he did in this story, where he's just like, oh, well, that backfired. What do I do now? And what does he do now? He has to find the resolve in himself to become better. He has to find himself and become the Chosen One. And that's kind of what I was going for here, and that's kind of what uh, the story, or the moral of the story is, is the moral is anything is possible. You can, no matter what, what circumstance it is, if you have the ter determination within yourself, the belief in yourself, then you can do it. You can change the outcome of your future. You can't change the past, that's done. And that's something that Anakin had to come to terms with here. Is that the past is over with, you can't change that, there's no going back, so don't focus on it. The, the difference, the real change happens, is when you take a hold of your future and focus on your present. Don't look at the future, because it hasn't come yet. Instead, focus on your present, and you can affect the future. And that's what happened here. Anakin spent time living in the present, focusing on the present, and existing in the present, and he changed the future for the better. He finally got to raise his kids, and he also got to live a life of love. And while it wasn't with Padme, he did get to live it with somebody that cared about him enough to take care of him when he was at his weakest. And I think Dawes, while the name is certainly not rolling off the tongue as easily as Zeno or, or Daisha or whatnot, or Tabre, but Dawes um, is certainly that person that is there when you need them most, and one that shouldn't be forgotten for being there when you need them most. But as is life, as is Star Wars, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, helps out the channel. Anyways, stay tuned. I will have an array of videos for next weekend, Friday through Monday is a new upload schedule, uh, especially during school. So anyways, I love you all. Spread the love and always remember my friends, may the force be with you.